Hey guys, this is Hoodstock4, and today I'm going to be doing um, a video review. Now, if any of you remember, I got a that box of Crisis 2 figures. Now, I'm going to be doing reviews for all of them. Well, all the five that I have, because I have the grunt, and I'm definitely going to be showing the packaging for all the figures that I have. Um, so, first up, we're doing my what is probably my favorite out of the bunch, Nomad. Yeah, uh, here's his packaging. You know, up here you got a picture of Alcatraz, who is later called Prophet in the next game. I don't know why. Uh, I got a picture of Nomad there. There's the Stalker, the Cell Assault unit, the Grunt, and the Heavy. Uh, stuff Heavy. Now, I can't read this, these words, because they're way too small for me to read. But I'm going to let you guys pause. And you can read it if you want. Alright. And right here you have a shot of what I'm assuming that's a... I'm assuming that's a shot of the figure. Although, let me take a better look. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. But, uh... Yeah, you know, I mean, this up here just talks about the game in general. And this talks about the first game, how, uh, you know, and... I forget what island it was called, but how they discovered the alien artifact, and then blah blah blah. Aliens trying to take over the world, and he's the guy who's supposed to stop it using this really high tech suit. Uh, it's basically supposed to make him like Master Chief from the Halo series. You see, you got a nice picture of Alcatraz there holding his scar rifle. Nomad, Crisis 2, Crytek. Now, something interesting about the packaging. So here's Nomad, and here's the Cell Assault unit. Now, I looked at all the packaging for all the figures in this line, and the Cell Assault unit is the only figure that has a picture of the character on the front of the packaging. He's the only one who does. I'm not joking. Seriously, go... I mean, if you had these figures, or if you can find images, go look at all the different pack for all six different packaging for each figure. I mean, he's the only one who has a picture. It's kind of odd. So, anyways... Uh, moving on to the figure. Let me take his gun out of his hand. Um, the figure, the fig, the Crisis figures. Um, they were, they were, they're decent. They're decent toys. Uh, I mean, they don't feel the highest of quality to me. They do feel a little cheap, and especially with that big, huge, ugly screw inside. It, it makes them feel a little cheap. But luckily, my GI Joes have the same screw in their leg, and I'm used to that, so I can tolerate it. And plus, the nice thing is they did paint it to help it, or that's a black screw. I don't know. To, you know, to help it blend in with the figure. So, it, I mean, at least they tried somewhat. I mean, the plastic quality, it, it doesn't feel that well. It doesn't feel like that high of quality, but, you know, I mean, these aren't meant as super collector's items. They're just meant for ki kids who are a fan of the game. Oh, and if you're wondering what this is, this is a uh, bit of a weapon I made for myself. Basically, it's a hatchet, super duct taped to a pipe, and this is a that's really heavy. It's about the about the weight of a gun. So, yeah, I don't know why I should do that. I guess it's just in case you're curious. But anywho, getting back to what we we're talking about, <laughs> kind of distracting, but um, the de the detail on him. It's it's a decent amount of detail. That's pretty good, honestly, in my opinion. See all the different paint apps there? Which is not a whole lot. It's mostly plastic color. Um, he does have paint apps in, with the silver. Those are paint apps. Or maybe that's gold. I don't know. I'm colorblind if you've been paying attention to my video. But there's a lot of molded in detail on the back. And articulation for Nomad includes a, it's on it's on a ball joint. You get a little up and down, not a whole lot, but a little. You get a side to side. Unfortunately, his head end up ends up being angled when you turn it, so that is a downer. But I can live with it. He has a ball hinge at the shoulder. He has a bicep swivel. He has a single hinge. You get that about that much bend, about that much straight out of the arm. Has a swivel at the wrist, a uh, 
technically it's a ball joint at the abdomen. Uh, ball pin socket system like the GI Joe's use at the thighs. So good range of motion there. A hinge at the knee, not a whole lot of movement, but some. And a hinge at the ankle, no swivel, just a hinge. So articulation, it's not the best. I've seen better, but I've seen worse too. So let's say, let's put it there. So I mean, overall, the figure itself, I'll put it in the medium medium range. It's not really really good, but it's not really really bad. It's like, it's it's a good it's a good figure. It's decent. Now weapons for Nomad include this really cool. What I said before was a shotgun in my last video for the unboxing. I said that this looked like a semi-automatic shotgun, but I don't know. I mean, it almost looks like a uh, Scar H rifle or H Scar. I don't know, maybe this is an assault rifle. I don't know. Uh, these guns are really confusing, especially since I didn't play Crisis 1 or 2. I only played 3, so it's very confusing what those are. Then you get this very Halo, Halo-esque right, gun. And I think I heard people say that this was a shotgun, apparently. I mean, freaking cool shotgun. It's got this whole backstock thing like the Halo guns do, like the assault rifle. So that's pretty cool. The guns are fairly detailed. There's no paint applications on them, but... Yeah, well, they're still cool guns. So there's that. Also came with a p pistol, which is rem which that front is a little reminiscent of a Beretta M9. Just a little. Just a little. Um... Now, interesting thing. Uh, I should have brought it out here. I'll I'll show you in my one of my upcoming videos. But there are actually two different molds for the pistol: a thin mold and a thick mold. This is the thick mold, and yes, there is one that's thinner and more flat. So this is the thick. Then he comes with a machine gun turret. Now, normally this per there's a problem with this, and that is that the tripod is way too low. Like um, here I'll use this to raise it up. But see, I mean, look how low that sits in comparison to the figure. I mean, it barely comes. It just comes up a little past his knee. So, I mean, the only way he could use this properly on the tripod is like that, you know, and having it set on something. But what I do is I take it off the tripod, and I found out this can be turned out to the side. And what I have my character do is hold one of the handles back here and then place the other hand up here so he can walk around with a big machine gun turret. I mean, you know, that's cool. Which the ammo box is actually removable. You can see the sculpted in and painted bullets, which is really nice. So, uh, so overall, could I recommend this figure? Uh, definitely, I feel like I could recommend this. It's you know, like I said, not the best figure I've ever seen, but not at all the worst. Honestly, I think the worst modern-day figure I've ever seen is actually the uh, newer, uh, was it the new Saga Legends figures with only five points of articulation? I mean, what the heck? That's really, really crappy. Proportions are good. I'll give them that. I'll give them that. But, I mean, yeah. And this came out a couple of years before. I want to say this came out uh, about... 2010, I want to say somewhere around there. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was I think it was 2010. Like I said, I could be wrong, but um, I will be doing all five figure reviews today. So this is gonna be the first upload. Then uh, who should I do next? I think next I'll do the cell assault unit. Then I'll do Alcatraz. Then I'll do the heavy. Then I'll do the stalker. Or I, I might do the heavy end. No, I don't think it will. Uh, Alright. But, um, anyways, this is Hood Soccer 4, signing, signing out.